I was very traumatized after seeing that man turn into some kind of messed up organism right in front of my eyes. I just sat in my booth rereading the rules again and again. It was so dark in here that I had to use a small lamp on the table next to me. They really need to fix the lights in here. Yeah, I also realized that I had broken the first rule. Hopefully other than traumatizing me, it didn't do much damage. The first thing I tried to do was walk out, but I could see movements from my peripheral vision, and they got closer as I moved towards the exit. The shadows in the station elongated towards me, and I got a horrible gut feeling. I won't even make it a few steps outside the station if I exit before the end of my shift. I ran back to my booth and just sat there. It felt like the shadows themselves were watching me. Suddenly I saw movement in one of the cameras. There was a dark figure. No, I can't even call it a figure. It was a literal monster. It had four arms. Or were they tentacles? They each ended in a razor sharp point. Were those eyes all over its body? It had red bead like things over its whole body. They reminded me of small bright red jewels on a pitch black fabric. It had things coming out of its mouth. That's all I can call them, things. They weren't like tentacles, they were twisted and curled like worms, as if it was vomiting its whole brain out. It had legs like the fins of a fish, thin and floppy. How is it even standing straight? It suddenly dawned on me. I quickly tore my eyes off the camera feed. I covered the camera feed with my jacket. The whole image of the creature had been fully etched into my brain and I was shaking uncontrollably. I swear I hadn't looked for too long. Chills ran up my spine as I heard a high pitched whistle. It sounded excited and hungry. More shrill whistles echoed around the dark station. My whole body was frozen on the spot, and I swear that the creature could hear my panicked heartbeat. The whistles got louder and louder, as if they were coming closer. A black sticky liquid oozed out from underneath the door of my booth. I backed up and the second time this night nearly lost my dinner on the floor. My stomach must be very strong. The liquid bubbled and seeped in very slowly. It didn't have a color. It was the color of, of nothingness. I was actually mesmerized by its color. It was the color you see in between your dreams at night. It was the color a blind man would see. I suddenly saw the same creature I saw in the camera feed now literally touching the glass of my booth. I let out a sharp yelp as the creature suddenly moved towards the door and the doorknob started rattling. Then I heard another sound. A sound that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Just when I thought I couldn't experience any more fear than what I was currently experiencing. All my muscles locked up. I was literally frozen in fear. The sound was indescribable. It was a mixture of moans and laughter, crying and shouting. It was a sound nothing can recreate. The sound blared like a horn and my brain suddenly processed what was happening. The phantom train was coming. The creature that was at the door of my booth also looked scared. It spasmed all over like a fish out of water. Suddenly it turned around and ran or slithered. I don't even know what word to use for its movement. Looks like I just survived breaking another rule. The phantom train came in. Have you guys ever seen Thomas the Tank Engine? Well yeah, that's exactly how the train looked like. It had a human face embedded into its front. Other than that, the train was fairly normal and it came to a stop on a platform. I couldn't erase the image of the face of the train looking at me as it stopped by. It had an unnatural grin on its face, its eyes way too big and cartoony. It took a lot of effort to snap out of it and pick up the handgun out of the drawer from under my desk. The gun was already loaded. I did not want to break this rule. Even the creature that came after me was scared of this train. I honestly do not want to face whatever comes out of the train. Something deep in my gut told me that if this time I failed to follow the rule, I will not make it out of the subway. Guess who came out of the train? It was my little sister. She recently turned 15. She walked out looking dazed like she had just woken up. She looked around and saw the train station. Her eyes lit up as soon as she saw me. I pointed the gun at her and her face crossed over with fear. And concern. She told me to put the gun down. 
She was asking me why I was doing this. Suddenly the train blared its hideous horn and its door started to shut. My sister looked back equally disgusted at the sound. I pulled the trigger. It all happened in slow motion. The handgun made a loud sound that echoed all across the subway station. The bullet pierced the back of my sister's head and made blood splatter everywhere. My sister dropped like a stone and blood gushed out of her wound like a waterfall. It pooled all around her lifeless body. The train left, its horn mocking me. I quickly ran back to my booth and broke down. I cried for what seemed like hours and screamed at the subway station. She seemed so real. Was it actually her body laying there? Did I just take the life of my sister? No, I, I couldn't have. I'm trying to calm down by typing this up. It's only 3.20 am and I have around 2 hours to go before my shift ends. I don't think I'll make it. This is not a subway station. It's a portal to hell.